let's get going in the message. <clears throat> going to talk to you about making a comeback. You know what's unique about this morning is that all the music goes along with what I'm going to share, what Miss Gloria shared, and I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, if, if even if you think you are healed and whole, even if you think your finances are great, there's nothing wrong with coming here and learning more. Yes. Yeah. Learning more. If you're not hungry for the word, how can God be hungry for you? Yeah. Mm. Wow. All right, I'll let that one chew for a while. <laughs> you, you understand? If we're not hungry for the word, and we're only, you know, we're only getting it on Sunday mornings for listening to a speaker for, you know, or being here for maybe two hours, how can we, we, we live the rest of the week and get along in the rest of the week and survive the rest of the week? How can we expect God to all of a sudden jump into our stuff and help us when his answers are here? Amen. Lord, I need an answer from you. I need an answer. It's right here. It's right here. And if you don't know where to find it, you need to get involved in a church that teaches you where to find it and how to use it. Amen? Yes. And that's, that's the pastor in me coming out. But we're going to talk about making a comeback. And I want you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now, if you noticed, I'm a walker. I'll be walking. I might even come down there and walk a little bit. But uh, 1, 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're going to talk about David. Now, you, you, we're, we're going to talk about David. It, it talks about here that he had just got done doing battle. He had just got done going forth and, and doing battle and had some miraculous wins. And he came back, and the Bible tells us he came back, and that was when he danced around and so on and so forth. And the people were praising him and singing songs to him, telling him how, how he, he slayed it, you know, his hundreds and tens of thousands and so on and so forth. And Saul, the king, only did a little bit. You know, they tried to raise him up greater than, than Saul, you know. Uh, you know and, and then in the midst of all this, he all of a sudden realizes when he comes back, he all of a sudden realizes, wait a minute, I need to go home. And I need to, I need to, on my way, now I'm paraphrasing this story, okay? Now on their way home, all of a sudden they see smoke in the distance as they're heading home. And as they're getting closer and closer and closer, they realize that it was their township that was burned. And when they got to their township, now this was the men that, this was David's mighty warriors. These were, you know, these were the greatest warriors that the country ever knew, the king ever knew. And so they get home and, and everything's gone. Everything's destroyed. And everything's missing. All their stuff is gone. All their servants are gone. All their animals are gone. All their wives are gone. All their children are gone. All their belongings are gone. Everything's gone. Anybody hit that spot yet in their life? I'm telling you, God has a comeback for you. I'm telling you, God has a comeback for you. Amen? And it says here, it tells us that as we go in, in chapter 30, and we're going to look at, uh, let's go to... <clears throat> Let's go to verse 4. It says, Then David and the people who were with him lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength in them to weep. They wept until there was no strength in them to weep. Mama, your child is doing wrong, and there's no more in you to weep for your child. Papa, there's no more in you to weep to take care of your family. You don't know how it's going to happen. You're weeping over your children. You're, we you you're weeping because you see what other, you might be comparing yourself to others. And you're just weeping. It's like, why isn't the Lord moving in my life? Why am I not seeing things happen? Why? Why? You're asking those questions, but you're not receiving the answers. God has you prepared for a comeback. Amen? Yes. And it goes on, it says, now, now David's two wives had been taken captive. 
In verse 6 it says, Moreover, David greatly distressed, was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. For all the people were, were embittered, and each one because of his sons and his daughters. But it says here, it says, But David strengthened himself in the Lord Amen. his God. Amen. You know, think of that. David, they're there, they're weeping because everything's up. They just got for, gone forth and did a great military might for, for the kingdom. And they come back and nothing was protecting their own stuff. Nobody was helping them. Nobody was standing. You might feel that, hey, I'm coming to church every, every Sunday or every week. I'm cleaning this place. I'm mowing the lawn. I'm making sure that it looks pretty. I'm making sure that the coffee is hot. I'm making sure that the desserts are nice. I'm making sure that everything looks decent and in order. And, it, and all of a sudden, my house is destroyed. God's preparing you for a comeback. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. God is preparing you for a comeback. Do you understand me? Yeah. I, uh, several years, you know, after we left, I, I had uh, several years that I was a high school coach, football coach. And, and, and I, we sat down and figured out what the record was uh, with the teams that, uh, that I was part of and what, you know, how, how I think it was, we had like 70 wins and 30 losses. In those years, there's only one year that the team still had a winning record, but that year uh, it wasn't good enough to make the state playoffs. You know, we were very successful in doing that. But I remember one specific game, and it was a playoff game, and uh, we were in the state of Michigan, living at the time. And this was, uh, if any of you know Michigan, it's up in the UP. We, we traveled all the way up there. We traveled like six hours to go play this game. And we get into town like about seven or eight o'clock at, at night, and we're going to do the game the next morning. And so we go out and we start this game, and, 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 and the game, you know, everybody's sluggish because they're tired from the night before. You know, all the travels and everything else, and getting, you know, 45 teenagers to bed on time. And getting them to sleep, you know, so they can get up early the next day and get prepared for a game. No, it's not going to happen. And so we were, we were there doing it, it, it you know. It, next morning we get up and we start the game. And we're doing okay. And then all of a sudden we're behind. We're behind in this game. And, and next thing you know, they kick a field goal and we're behind even more. So we're behind 10-0. And it's halftime. And we get everybody together and the team gets together, and then all of a sudden there's a few leaders that step forward and get everybody going. Well, as coaches, we just backed off and let the players get themselves going. You know, they came out and won that game 24 to 10. They did a comeback. When everything looked like they weren't going to, the team that they were playing, we were, it was predicted that we were going to lose by over 50 points to this team. But the boys had a different idea. They had it in their heads that they were going to do a comeback. And they came back and won. And we continued on in the playoffs. You know, in, in sports, great athletes and great teams and great players go through times when there's a comeback. In your life, as a, as a Christian, as a great Christian, as a winning Christian, as a child of God, there's going to be times when you have to go through a comeback. Amen? Mm -hmm. Just like David. So let's look and see what David did for this comeback. Let's look and see what, what happened here. Let's look, in verse 6, it says, it says, David strengthened himself in the Lord, in the Lord his God. He strengthened himself. What are some things that we could do to strengthen ourselves? What's that? Pray in, the spirit. Pray in the Spirit. What else? What's that? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. You know, if you were here this morning, Gloria talked about some of this. Stand by faith. Mm -hmm. Stand by faith. Believe in what happened. You know, one of the things I believe that David did is he thought back to his childhood. 
You know, he, they, they say he was 13 years old, 17 years old, somewhere, 15 years old. I'll just say 15. When he took on the giant, he showed up there to, to do what? Bring food to his brothers and bring, bring a good message from his fa father to his brothers. And his brothers mocked him. Some of you, your family are mocking you because of what you're standing for with God. Hello? Yes. You understand me? Some of you, your family's literally mocking you. I don't care. I don't care. Amen. That's a great word. I don't care. I don't care. And I don't. You can ask my wife. I don't care what my family thinks of me. Some of them think that this is just a journey that I'm on. You know, just to, you know, I don't know, make myself feel better. I've been in ministry for over 30 years. That's kind of a long journey, especially since I'm only 59, so over half of my life I've been in ministry. I don't care. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But it says David strengthened himself. You know, he's probably, you know, he had to pull away from what everybody who wanted to stone him, from what everybody else was saying about him, from those who, who were distraught, who, who were just totally tore up, he pulled away from them, and he probably started thinking, wait a minute, I took on the lion and protected the sheep. I took on the bear and protected the sheep. I went and, and, and took food to my brothers, confronted the king and said, who, you know, what the, happens to the person who, you know, who slays this giant? Now think about, you know, I want you to think about that story. You know, it talks about, you know, they were in war. What kind of war is it? They were hunkered down in holes because they were scared of one man who would stand up. There was no, there was no spears going anywhere. There's no arrows going at anybody. They were hiding. What kind of warfare is that? Think of that for a second. You know, sometimes the world gets the wrong ideas and we just get caught up in them. And it's not an idea of faith. Some of you are thinking on that statement, aren't you? Sometimes we get caught up into the world's views and the world's ways, and it's not by faith. It's not what God says. And so David, David went and he confronted the king, and, and he says, hey, I'll take on this giant. You're just a kid. Again, somebody was mocking him. You're just putting him down. You're just a kid. He says, yeah, but I took on the lion, and I took on the bear, and surely this giant, this uncircumcised giant, in other words, one who's not a believer, who's rising up against you, I'll take him out. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Are you willing to stand up on the strengths of what God has brought you through? Amen. You yeah. know, one of the things that we, we declare with our churches is that our Sunday morning services, yeah, we're to build each other up, but they're designed to celebrate what God has brought us through that previous week and then celebrate what he's going to take us through the week to come. In other words, we don't care what the world has. We're just going to celebrate Jesus. Mm -hmm. I love that statement. I don't care. I'm going to use it probably 50 times in this <laughs> message. I don't care. I don't care. But it talks about how, how, you know, and David went forth. You know the rest of the story. He went forth and he took on the giant, slew him and took off his head and everything else. But the king offered up his armor and his, you know, and, the, and David said, no, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it the way God wants me to do it. See, the world has a plan, but it's not necessarily a faith. Thank you, Pastor. That will preach. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. And so he goes on. It says David strengthened himself. He started getting the attitude that he, he was a winner. Amen. He had won. Amen? And then the next step is, is he called forth the priest, and he said, please bring me... My ephod. Gene, I need your sweater for a second. He says, please bring me forth my ephod. Now, if those of you that don't know what an ephod is, an ephod is also known as a prayer shawl. It's what they wore as a prayer shawl. And what they would do is they'd take this as a prayer shawl, if this represented it, they'd put it up over their heads, and then they'd spend time in prayer. Now, notice, I can't see to the right or to the left of me. 
And yet, in many times in prayer, we get unfocused because we see things to the right and to the left. When God wants us to look straight. Hello? Straight at him? You got that? You see that picture? Okay. And so there's, there's, he asked for the, he asked for the, uh, his, his prayer shawl, his ephod to come forth. And it says that they, that, that it, they brought it to him. And then the next line in, in verse seven, it says, and uh, I'm sorry, verse eight, it says, and then the, David inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. He asked the Lord, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? Shall I? Shall I do this? You know, there's a lot of times that, that we go forth and, and, and somebody does something against us or somebody does something to our families or somebody, and we decide we're going to go forth and do it in our own power. Bubba, if you don't have God on your side, it's just strictly you. And you're, you're opening the door for a downfall. And you're opening the door for it to be even worse than it was when you first stepped into it. Amen? Amen. Or me, one of the two. But he says, he says, shall I pursue them? He was asking God, shall I pursue them? His prayers along the lines of, turn over with me over to uh, uh, Acts chapter 4. When I teach on prayer, this is one of my favorite scriptures to teach on prayer. Acts chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse uh, 23. And it talks about Peter and John here. And it talks about when they were captive. They were whipped and they were captive. And they were told not to go forth and to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. Not walk in the anointing of God anymore. Not have the, the sacraments of God anymore. Not do those things that God has for you anymore. It says, and when they had been released, they went their own, to their own companions, and they reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Verse 24. And when they heard this, they lifted their voices to God in one accord. They lifted their voices to God. They were in unity. They were in agreement with it. You know, one of the things that David did is he got, when he strengthened himself, he got around things that were in agreement with God. He got around people that were in agreement with God. So that why? So that they would be in agreement with him and they could go forth and do what God wanted them to do. You see that? You with me? It says, and it talks about here how their prayer went. It said, uh, you know, who by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of our father David, in verse 25, and, you know, it did it, uh, why did the Gentiles rage and the people uh, devise futile things and so on and so forth. And then you go down here to verse 29. And it says, and now, Lord. See, a lot of times in prayer, we pray to God our problem and our situation instead of giving him praise for who he is. When we need to praise him, we need to praise him a lot. Yeah. His power and his anointing come through, his, through praise to, through, to him. You follow? Mm -hmm. And that praise doesn't necessarily mean music. Just your words that you're speaking for. How you love him. I remember the day when our son was little. He would get, you know, he'd get up with me early Sunday mornings and he'd come in and crawl up into my lap and he'd just start kissing me on the neck. And he'd say, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I love you. <laughs> Jeez, boy, what do you want now? You want, you want my wallet? Here you go. You want my keys to the car? He's four years old. You want the keys to the car? Okay, you can have that too. <laughs> what do you think God's going to do Amen. when you all of a sudden start doing those things? Amen. Hello? Yes. He's not going to give you a rock when you ask for a loaf of bread. <laughs> Hello? He's not going to give you, give you a serpent when you're asking for me. Unless you like eating serpents. I don't know. I've had some round snake stew, and it was pretty good. And uh, some grilled round snake was all right, too. But it has to be done right. 
But it goes on, you know, he goes on here and says, And now, Lord, take note of their threats and grant that thy bond servants will speak their, our words with all confidence. And extend thy hand to heal. Signs and wonders will take place through the holy name of your servant Jesus. That was their prayer. They prayed that they would have more, what? Confidence to do what? Speak the word. Instead of praying, uh, you know, the Bible says we're supposed to lift up those who are enemies against us and pray for them. But instead of focusing on them, praise God for them. And say, Lord, you know their hearts. Fix them. Or like, you know, any of you watch Jesse Duplantis? Know Jesse Duplantis? Hey, you got mail. Take care of it. <laughs> that, that's his guy good because he says he, he is and he will. The problem is, is we keep gathering it up and taking on that care yes. and keep walking into it ourselves and walk, trying to walk it out ourselves. When the perfect phrase is, I don't care. Take care of it, Lord. It's your problem. Amen. Mm -hmm. He says he will. And he has. Amen? Amen. And so and you read on there and it says, it says in verse 31, it says, And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with what? Boldness. Boldness. Say, I speak the word with boldness. I speak the word with boldness. You know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Speak the word with boldness. When you speak the word with boldness, you're planting seeds in your life. I like tell, telling people, you know, you're living today per the words you spoke yesterday. <coughs> Hello? And your tomorrow is being framed or designed per the words you're speaking today. Oh, you guys got to think on that one, don't you? <laughs> you're, you're living today per the words you spoke yesterday. And your tomorrow is being framed or being designed per the words you're speaking today. And so if you're, if you're speaking doubt and unbelief, I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, you know, if all you're doing is down and out in all your words, guess what your tomorrow's going to be? <laughs> yeah, busted and disgusted, the same as today. So if you want to change it, you need to get off that train and get on a new track and start going down another avenue. Amen. Amen. Start living the words that God has spoken in the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'll give you one. You ready for this? No, we're in here. Does he say no? Ooh, that just stirred up some religious spirit. You understand? Nowhere. Pastor, am I right? Right. Nowhere in Nowhere in there does it say no. It's always amen. It's always amen. Yes. So be it. It's mm -hmm. done. You know why this word is here? So that we can speak it forth on the earth so he can operate on the earth. Amen. But he can't operate on the earth if we don't speak the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You're needing healing? Speak to your body. Yes. Speak to it. Because the Bible says you're healed and whole. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. You're healed and whole. It says by his stripes, you were healed. Yeah. If you were, you is. If you is, you was. 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 Hallelujah. Hello? Hallelujah. You are healed. Say, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. We sang the song, Sickness, You Have No Right. You're under my feet. Yes. Amen. I'm healed. I'm, healed. I'm prosperous. I'm, prosperous. I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. I'm overcoming. I'm, overcoming. I'm victorious always. I'm, victorious. I'm healed and whole. I'm, healed. I'm highly favored. I'm highly and I look good doing it. You do? Whose image are you created in? Hello? Come on. Whose image are you created in? God. And we say, oh, how beautiful God he is, don't we? We look good doing it. We look good doing it. You know, 
let's go back to first Samuel again. You know, you think about it. When you come into the presence of a king back then, you had to be energized, you had to be up, you had to be um, believed at your favor. Mm -hmm. you, you had to be all, you couldn't be down, you couldn't look sickly, you couldn't look, look, look any of those ways. Why? Because if you came into the presence of the king and you're bringing his confidence down, they'd behead you. You understand? God, praise God that our king is not that way. Wow. You understand? But think of that for a second. Why do we treat the world's kings differently than our king? Are you guys with me this morning? Amen. Yes. Okay. And it goes on here. It talk, we're talk, going back to talk about David. After he had talking to God, it, he said to him, Pursue. He says, For you shall overtake them, and you shall sh surely rescue them. And so what did David do? You look on to the rest of the story. It says, And he took 600 men who were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those left, where he left those, he left those who were, uh, who needed strength behind. The Bible says, but David pursued, and he pursued with 400 men. For 200, he left behind, exhausted, because because they just got back doing battle. And if you recall, they were also exhausted because they couldn't weep anymore. Okay? Now, you know, each person does things different. I'm 59 and I have more energy than a lot of 40 year olds. In fact, I, I have a lot of 40 year olds that I officiate football with and sports with that look at me and say, How can you do it? How can you do all those games? I can't. But through him, I can do all things. You understand? That's a foundational verse to me. I can do all things. Ray, how did you pick up on that job so fast? It took so-and-so this many months to learn it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Mm -hmm. You understand? If I don't know how to do it and I get the job, you got to give me some insight. Help me with this. I, I, I had a, a job one time that uh, there was a businessman or, or a young man that was graduated from business school that was the supervisor, the manager of that station that I was working at, and he couldn't do anything because he had no. He, even though he graduated Bible or Bible school, business school, he had no business sense because he had not worked out in the world to figure out how to put the two together. And so the whole group they fired him, and the whole group got together and they wanted, you know, they promoted me. Basically, said, no, Ray would be the good leader of all this. Okay, I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know his job or anything else. I just stepped in and, okay, Lord, this is where you want me to go now? How do I fix this? How do I do this? I took a, a, a $1 million plus contract that was about, the company was about ready to lose and saved it and turned it into a $4 million contract. God gave me the insight. Amen. He gave me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. David had the same thought. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through God. My God has brought me through all this. I can do it. You thought we were, God lost David there, right? We're going back. It said, and there's 200 that stayed behind. And so they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him, we're at verse 11, and gave him bread to, and he ate. And he provided him, and they provided him water. And they gave him a piece of fig cake and, and two cloves of raisins, and he basically fed him and took care of him. And said, and David said to him, to whom do you belong? You're either for us or against us. But the unique thing is that there is that they fed him first. They met his need first. Hello? God always meets your need. No matter how wore out, how, how, 
how poor you feel, no matter how bad you feel, no matter where you're at, God will always meet you. He'll always be there for you. It says, it, it, and he said to him, I am a young man of, an Egypt, uh, of Egypt, a servant of, Amalek, of, the, of an Amalekite. There we go. I'll get it out. And my master left me behind when I fell sick three days ago. So he was part of that raid party that burned everything and took all of David's stuff. And he made me, he, he made a raid on, and it, I just told you that. Verse 15, and then David said to him, will you bring me down to this band? Will you show me where they're at? Well, they left him to, you know, basically to die out in the desert somewhere, out in the wilderness. And David came along and nour nourished him and, get, you know, and helped him, ministered to him. And so now it's like, yeah, I'm going to go with you, David. I'm, forget them. They just left, left me and forsaken me. You know, that's what the world does, guys. The world is just leave you hanging out there with nothing, no end to it, no, no net underneath to catch you. They'll just leave you there. But God. But God. Amen? Mm -hmm. But God. And it goes on, and, and it, it says that they pursued them. And when he had brought, brought him down, behold, they were spread, this... this uh, these people were, were spread all over. They were eating and drinking and dancing. They were partying because they thought that they had gotten away with something. The world thinks that way too. Amen? And it said, it, it said, And David slaughtered them from the twilight until the evening of the next day, and not a man of them escaped, except for 400 who climbed on their camels real quick and fled. That's what the world will do to you. If all of a sudden, all of a sudden the, the world will bring you in, pull you in, and then all of a sudden it'll leave you hanging. And if you're not quick to flee, it'll leave you hanging. They'll just say, oh, you're on your own. Do your own battle. And the next thing you know, you're totally destroyed. It says, but nothing of theirs. It says, David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken and rescued his two wives. Now, let's stop there for a second. You know, I have one wife. I have a great wife. I have a blessed wife. I have not figured out why a guy would want more than one wife. That's right, guys. Just keep staring at me. Don't say a thing. Don't speak. Shh. <laughs> Don't even smile. Just, just stare at me. But I love my wife. But there are times. And then to have two of them. You know, you ever watch the, the, the programs on TV that, uh, you know, what's that one called? Oh, it's Sister's Wives. There's five or six of them married to one guy. Four. All right, four of them. Married to one guy. One. And they're constantly like a bunch of cats at each other. Fear! Fear! Constantly. I just love my one. All right, guys, that's where you agree. Yes, I do. Yes. That was your chance, guys. All right, if you get in deep water today, that's your problem. I don't care. It said, so David, and, you know, he, he, when it says, uh, nothing of theirs was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything. You know, God had protected, every, protected everything. Mm -hmm. Protected everything. He basically clustered in, uh, in amongst themselves and says, okay, we're going to keep everything. You can't do anything to them. You can't, you, you, can't, you can't mistreat them. You can't do anything at all to them. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a bunch of angels that have just been compassed around them. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's what God does for you. Amen. He protects you no matter what. He protects your stuff. He protects everything about you. Mm -hmm. Well, why did this happen? Sometimes we just open the door. Yeah. What's your confession like? 
David believed. He strengthened himself in the Lord. He believed that he would win. You understand? Do you believe that you win? Do you believe that you win? Come on. Do you believe that you win? Yes. We just got done doing a confession that I'm blessed, overcoming, victorious always, healed and whole, highly favored. Amen? Yes. And those were all things that the Bible says you are. Do you believe you win? Amen. Amen? Do you believe you win? Because you can never strengthen yourself in the Lord if you're not sure that you win. You, you, it just doesn't work. Because no matter what, your actions and your thoughts will overtake your words. Your words are like seed. You throw a seed into the ground. And then sooner or later, your actions and your thoughts will throw weeds into the ground. How many of you like tomatoes? Okay. But a tomato plant in the middle of corn, a cornfield, that tomato plant is what? A weed. It's a weed. Why? Because you're expecting corn here and not a tomato. Mm -hmm. You see it all the time, you know, outside, grass, you have grass down. Wait a minute, why is my grass now all of a sudden over, over, my, over my driveway? Well, you like grass, but it, that part that's over the driveway is a weed. You see? When we get his plan, we're able to prepare the field and the harvest to come in for, that, that he wants us to have, and, and that he has prepared for us to come in. David strengthened himself. The Bible says he clothed himself. He got himself prepared. He put on the anointing of God. It says that he inquired of the Lord. He sought after God's answers. And then the last one, it says he pursued them. And on their journey back, as they were coming back, they met up with those 200 that they left by the brook. Those 200 that they left by the brook, when you go in and study it out, those 200, they left behind a, 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 lot of, a lot of the possessions that they had taken to battle with them and a lot of things that they had won while they were in battle. They left those behind with those 200 that were too tired to journey on. Why? They lightened the load so they could speedily catch up with this band that had destroyed their homeland. And so they're coming back, and David, you know, David says, all right, let's divide every, everything up to each person, that, their own, you know, their animals that were theirs, their, their wives that were there, their, their children, and so on, their servants, and, and, and even the, the material things. And a couple of the men, this is what you got to watch for, even those that you know in church, hello, there are those who are not walking with God, 100%. Yeah, they might have fire insurance, or what I call salvation. But they're not being led by his spirit. So they're operating in their own head, trying to take advantage of something. They all of a sudden said, why do we want to give them back their stuff? They didn't even come with us to do this battle. Well, wait a minute, they just got them protecting your stuff that you had left behind. Because the last time you didn't have anybody protecting your stuff that you left behind, it was completely burned to the ground and stolen. You see how fast this thing just escalates and gets ugly. David said, no. What's rightfully theirs is theirs. I'm telling you right now, God will restore back to you what's rightfully yours. Amen. And if you don't know what the word of God says, you will not know what is rightfully yours. That was a good place for amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You understand? If you don't know what's rightfully yours, it can't be restored back to you. Because you don't know what's yours. Your insurance company. Your insurance company wants to know your vehicle so that they can know that it's rightfully yours, right? And so, so, it's a, so if something happens to that vehicle so they can restore it back to you, right? Oh, come on now. Am I right? Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's something that your house, your house, you have health insurance on your house. And so it could be restored back to you in case something happens to your house or things are stolen out of your house. It, you know, you, the insurance company wants to know about it. Am I right? Amen. So it can be restored back to you. Why do we not allow God to restore things back to us and not know what he, what's ours to be restored? Hello? Hello. <laughs> now, if you want to give it to me, that's fine. That's a good place to laugh. <laughs> okay? If you want to give it to me, that's fine. But it's yours. Amen. It's yours. Amen. Amen. Amen? Say, it's mine. It's mine. mine. God has restored, God has restored. All, that all that I'm missing. It's been restored back to me. Now, is there a New Testament scripture for that? Yes. There is. The woman with the issue of blood. The Bible said, you know, that she was healed and whole. Nothing missing. That word, that word there means nothing missing, nothing broken, all restored back. In fact, it says that all that the doctors had stolen from her was restored back. Hello? Amen. Say, I have nothing missing. I'm not missing. It's, all it's all restored. I'm healed and whole. I'm healed and whole. Amen. Highly favored. Highly favored. Amen. Amen. Amen? Do you believe that? Yes. Just the same as David. You know, <laughs> comebacks, sometimes it, it, it's more work. It takes more out of you physically. For a comeback in sports, it is, it does, but those who are prepared for that comeback get the victory. Amen. Are you prepared for that comeback? Amen. Come on now, are you prepared? Yes. Yes. <coughs> How many need a comeback? Yes. Who needs a comeback in this place? Yes. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for you, Father. I thank you for yes. all these people. I thank you, Lord, that those who raise their hands, there is a comeback yes. that is theirs. Yes. There is a restoration that is theirs. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that your word goes yes. forth and restores, yes. restores all, restores yes. all that was destroyed, restores yes. all that was broken, restores all, all that was yes. taken from them. Yes, all. Oh. Yes. The joy, the peace. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Now, I never, never like to finish a message before I do this. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you're here, obviously, listening to, the, to this message, trying to figure out what this white boy is talking about. But you know you need to straighten up your life with God. And you're going to tell me, Ray, I'm not walking with him the way I should. Or you're going to say, I'm not walking with him at all. If that's you, I want to pray with you. I want to make sure that before you leave here, that you are good ground for that comeback. Because if you're living in the world, you will not see that comeback. You understand? So either one of those two invitations, you're either walked away or not walking with him the way you should, or you're not walking with him at all. I want you to lift your hand so we can pray with you. Who is that? Yes? Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Anyone else? All right, everybody pray this with me. Say, Father God. Father God. Right now. Right now. I come to you. I come to you. And ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. Of, of rebellion. Of rebellion. In my life. In my life. Of not walking with you. I'm not walking with you. The way I should. The way I should. And the way I know I should. I know I should. Your word says, Your word says that, if that if I confess Jesus as Lord, and believe in my heart, that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. So I confess Jesus right now as Lord of my life. And I believe that he's raised from the dead. And the Bible says, the Bible says because, of my confession, because of my confession and my belief, and my belief I'm, born again. I'm born again. Amen. Amen.